What's up guys, Games and welcome back to another preview of the 20 previews in 20 day. We are heading into the final week of our previews and today we are going to talk about a team that suffered a huge, huge amount of changes throughout the 2021 transfer window, but also had a decent 2021 because we are going to talk about the German outfit of Bora Hansgrohe German Professional Cycling. Now in 2021, Bora managed to win 30 races. Uh, they're the first team to reach the 30, um, the 30 win level in these previews, uh, putting them in sixth position of the UCI World Tour ranking. Very, very solid season. Uh, winners that you can see on the screen, uh, I won't go through them all, uh, but the main one being Schachmann, Kemna, Peter Sagan, um, Gro Schartner, Ide Schelling, and Pascal Ackermann. Uh, they've won basically everything they could have expected to win. Uh, they've won on some World Tour stages. They've won uh, World Tour races. They did not win a monument, nor did they do very well on the classic aspect. Uh, they've won Grand Tour stages. They've won NCs. Overall, a very solid season. Uh, they've won the, the um, uh, Chiclamino? Yeah, the Chiclamino jersey of the Giro. They've won Paris Nice. Uh, they finished 5th of the Tour de France, I believe, through Wilke Kellerman, which, I'm not going to lie, I had fully forgotten. Uh, definitely something I had not kept in mind. Um, overall, a very, very, very good season. Um, some of their young riders also getting some few wins, the likes of Matthew Wolfs, the likes of Giovanni Aleotti, which was good, the likes of Jordi Meus as well. Uh, Ida Schelling showing a lot of, pr of prowesses, sorry. On, um, on the Tour de France in the first week, getting Polka jersey and really, really fighting for it. Um, yeah, overall, a very, very solid 2021. I think the biggest downside uh, is that on the Classics, you haven't really fared very well. Um, I think you got a podium on the Amstel with Schachmann, uh, but on La Flèche and on Liège, you're not exactly doing well. Uh, you get P4 on San Remo, I think, through Peter Sagan, but on Dironde and Parobé, again, not exactly where you, you probably would have wanted to be. So, yeah, that's, that's the biggest downside to Boras 2021, but overall a very solid season. And on a god, this is the biggest transfer window so far, name-wise, because you're losing, well, arguably the rider who made your team. Uh, you're losing Peter Sagan, uh, who came through after, like, the team Netap had gone. Um, and with him, he's bringing Danielos, Mashi Bodnar, and Jura Sagan to direct energy. You're also, therefore, losing Eric Bashka, because you don't really need a Slovenian uh, side anymore, you're losing Maxi Schachmann, sorry, Nickel Schwarzman, um, Andra Schillinger, Rudiger Selig, uh, Marcus Burgard, who's retiring, and Pascal Ackermann, uh, who wanted to get some, uh, some change, and he's going to UAE. You're losing some big names, but fuck me, the signings, Jesus Christ, you're starting off with former Green Jersey, Sam Bennett, former rider from Boransgo, back home when he said he was going to leave Bora because it wasn't good for his mental state, and then he's going... I don't understand, but uh, we move. Danny Van Poppel, uh, back to World Tour. I mean, he was already in World Tour with Intermarché. But back in good shape with Intermarché. Um, moving to Bora. And then... <laughs> Alexander Vlasov, Sergei Kwica, Jai Henley. Why? 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 Who did you lose in Mountain to make you think that that was a wise purchase? No one. Uh, Marco Halla, who had shown some very decent things with Bahrain. But then again, everyone shows good things with Bahrain. Uh, Jonas Koch, Ryan Mullen, Shane Archbold, which will be a, a decent, decent leader man for Samuel Bennett. Uh, and then two youngsters. Uh, the first one, Luis Joe Lurs, uh, and the, the second one, Sienu Tubrux. I think I've pronounced that right, I could be wrong. Uh, who's already, like, seen as the next Remco Evenepoel. Remco Evenepoel is already younger than me, so this makes me just old. Uh, but fuck me, what a window. What a window. You're getting Sam Bennett, and sure, when uh, someone goes from Quick Step, or sorry, from yeah, from Quick Step, to another team, they usually win less. Uh, but I mean, he, he he's shown in the past that he could win with Bora, and Bora knows how to win as well. Um, Van Poppel, decent signing, and you wanted to strengthen yourself on the Grand Tour aspect. You're getting Vlasov, who's left Astana, didn't exactly perform as well as he probably would have wanted to on the uh, Grand Tours. P uh, four on the Giro for uh, for the Russian. Um, he was joined by Sergio Higuita. I feel like he could have had a great role with VF, if I'm honest. Uh, but 
I guess he was just looking for a way out for uh, for something maybe a bit new, a bit more uh, competitive. I think Bora is a more competitive team than than yet for sure. Uh, so that's quite fun to see. And Jahim Lee, who did not capitalize on his um on his twenty twenty one Giro, sorry twenty twenty Giro, where he finished second behind um behind Thierry Gunnart. Uh, and that means that Jahim Lee and Wilco Kellerman are going to be together yet again. Uh, and the the lineups grant wise for um for Boran's goal are ridiculous. Um, they've got like three leaders on every single grand tour. So, yeah, it, it's gonna be quite mental. Now, for my rider to watch, I've I've struggled. I can't lie, I've really struggled because I could have gone. I mean, my first thought was to go with Sienna to Brooks. I figured that was maybe a bit too easy, and also he's not going to be rushed. He's not going to do any big big races this year. I think like his biggest race most likely is the Tour of the Alps. So I figured let's not go for him. So. It led me to like Matthew Walsh, Jordi Meus, Giovanni Aleotti, Ide Schering. And I would have gone for Eder. I really would have. But he's not going to do any Grand Tours this year. And I feel like that's... I mean, on paper, he's not going to do any of them. So I could not go for him either. Giovanni Aleotti... The issue he has is that his biggest race will be the Giro, and there's already three mountain leaders on the Giro. I don't see how he's going to fit in the team, and I don't think he's going to have a lot of opportunities. So it was either Jordi Meus or Matthew Walsh. Both of them are sprinters. The two of them are going to the Vuelta. So I think they'll have a battle to know which will be the marquee sprinter. And I'm going to back Jordi Meus. He's won Paris-Bourges last year at the end of the season. He's also already podium the stage on the Vuelta last year. He's a very promising sprinter, 23-year-old from Belgium, born on the 1st of July, I think. Um, I wouldn't say I've got high, high hopes. I mean. I don't think he's going to like win every single one world or race next year, but I reckon he's got a decent shot at winning, like probably like a sprint on the world if I'm honest. Um, he's very talented, and I think he's going to benefit a lot from the departure of Pascal Ackerman and Peter Sagan. So sure, let's say that Bennett replaces Pascal Ackerman, um, then it's I guess Danny Van Poppel technically could replace Peter Sagan, but Jordi Meus I think has more potential to become a better sprinter than Danny Van Poppel. So, yeah, back to Belgium for my ones to watch. But then again, there's so many young riders I could have backed. Like even um, Frédéric, what's his name? Vidov? Something like that. A Dane of 20-year-old. There's so many things. And this so many things is shown by the rating. I've given them 4 star on 2021. And they are the first team to get a 5 star rating on something. And that is on their transfers. Five star on the transfers that are ridiculous, just ridiculous. Uh, ambition four and a half. Yeah, you've signed Sam Bennett, Vlasov, Jai Hindley, Kiguita. You've got youth prospect. You still have Schachmann. You've got Nils Polit. Yeah, yeah, that's quite good. Yeah. Only reason it's not five star ambition is that I don't think they have someone in in like they don't have like a, a Pogacar or Roglic or a Bernal. Although I'm not sure I can put Bernal in that category anymore. They don't have a Slovenian. That's their issue. Uh, and kit-wise, two and a half stars. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie, it's starting to grow on me, which is why it's getting bang average. Because uh, three weeks ago when it was released, it, it, it was a red star. All right? It was uh, yet a, another case of Jayco back exchange. Um, but overall, that means it's four out of five for Boran's I'm I've got remarkably high hopes for them. I can't lie. I really, really have. But this is where we're going to wrap up this uh, preview. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Tomorrow, we are uh, heading for not the final time in Asia uh, with one of the two states from the Middle East. So it's either Bahrain or UAE or Kuwait cycling. But I don't think we're going to talk about Kuwait cycling. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys will be watching. Uh, just for the record, Cycling is back. There's a race right now going on. There's like the Volta Comunidad de Valencia. I don't care. It's going to be a shit sprint, but I'm so happy. And I hope you guys are as well. Uh, so yeah, destroy that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you tomorrow for the final five previews of the 2020 season. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the funk. Get your funk on, girl. And don't you ever let